वेलकम वेलकम टू सेशन ऑन इंटरनल्स ऑफ ए कंप्यूटर इंटरनल्स ऑफ ए कंप्यूटर और कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ ए कंप्यूटर और पार्ट्स ऑफ ए कंप्यूटर इंटरनल्स ऑफ ए कंप्यूटर कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ ए कंप्यूटर और पार्ट्स ऑफ ए कंप्यूटर व्हाट मेक्स ए कंप्यूटर अ मॉडर्न डे कंप्यूटर द मेजर कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ ए कंप्यूटर आर माइक्रो प्रोसेसर व्हिच इज अदरवाइज कॉल्ड एज सीपीयू मेन मेमोरी हार्ड डिस्क मदरबोर्ड विच इट मोड पावर सप्लाई कैबिनेट आर चेसिस कैबिनेट आर चेसिस नथिंग बट द आउटर एनक्लोजर सो दिस आर द मेन कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ ए कंप्यूटर मेन कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ ए कंप्यूटर एंड माइनर कंपोनेंट्स इंक्लूड डीवीडी ड्राइव कैश मेमोरी रीड ओनली मेमोरी सीमास बैटरी वाइड लैंड कार्ड और इट कैन बी अ वायरलेस लैंड कार्ड आल्सो ब्लूटूथ चिप which is on the motherboard cooling fan exhaust fan usb ports etc can be considered as minor components of a computer but uh, that list is not extensive we can add uh, other components also peripherals peripherals the peripherals are the components which are outside the computer they are not generally they are not generally placed inside a computer but they are outside the computer they are placed outside the computer but still they are connected to the keyboard connected to the computer examples are this keyboard and mouse keyboard and mouse are examples of peripheral devices they are, they are the external devices but still they are connected to the computer so list of peripherals again this list is not extensive these are some of the examples only keyboard mouse joystick web camera printer scanner microphone speakers pen drive external hard disk and external dvd drive or cd drive they are examples of peripheral devices now let us go into the explanation of this components so you have major components minor components peripherals the first component is the microprocessor or central processing unit microprocessor or central processing unit central processing unit because it is the main processor it is the central processor that's why it is called a central pro central processing unit apart from the central processing unit or cpu there will be math processor and there will be graphics processor graphics processor they may be present inside your computer inside your computer but this is the main processor central processing unit is the main processor so it executes the programs so when you reduce the size of the cpu to that of a small chip to the to that of a small chip then it is called as microprocessor microprocessor is nothing but the cpu reduced to the size of the chip or integrated circuit cpu consists of these components control unit arithmetic logic unit registers cache memory clock control unit controls the execution of instructions of the cpu so there will be some instructions which the cpu actually un understands remember the every cpu will have its own instruction set every cpu will have its own instruction set so control unit controls the execution of these instructions each instruction re requires some clock cycles some amount of time in simple terms and also control signals are necessary to control various devices like keyboard mouse etc you have to generate what are called as control signals like read signal write signal etc so the control unit generates and controls the signals indirectly it controls the various devices arithmetic logic unit is one which can be used to perform arithmetic and logic operations arithmetic means addition subtraction multiplication division etc logic operations means and and operation or operation not operation etc if something is true means not of true is false if something is true and something else is also true true and true is true 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 or false is true but if you consider one as true the other one as false true and false is false whereas true and are true are false that is 
taken as true. We will study more about these things later. But they are the logic operations. Next, registers. Registers are small memory devices that are present inside the CPU, not outside the CPU. They, they are capable of storing only few bytes of information, few bytes of information because they are very close to the computer. They are, they are present inside the CPU. They are present inside the CPU. So because they are present inside the CPU, CPU can quickly access them. So that's why registers are considered as high speed memory devices, high speed memory devices. Next, cache memory, cache memory. Cache memory is assumed to be present between what is called as CPU and RAM. In between CPU and RAM, cache memory is assumed to be present. Nowadays, some cache memory is also present inside the CPU also, inside the CPU, inside the CPU chip, etc. But for convenience, we'll assume that cache memory is in between CPU and RAM. Why this cache memory means? To increase the speed of execution. RAM is relatively slow when compared to CPU. RAM is relatively slow when compared to CPU. Now, how do you increase the uh, execution of speed of execution of programs? Place some of the contents in the RAM in the cache memory. Place some, some of the contents of RAM in the cache memory so, so that CPU can quickly access them. So now what are placed in cache memory means frequently executed instructions and frequently manipulated data are placed in cache memory. Again, cache memory is limited. Cache memory is limited. So everything inside a computer goes according to a time. Each instruction of a computer takes some number of what are called as clock cycles. The timing is generated by what is called as clock and timing is measured in terms of clock cycles. Memory, first component was CPU, main component, memory. So memory is the place where programs and data are stored and also accessed. From, from memory, we will access the programs and data. So broadly speaking, there are different kinds of memories, registers, cache memory, main memory, secondary memory, and then other devices like floppy disk, compact disk, DVDs, digital video disk, Blu-ray disk. Uh, you can say an extension of DVDs which are capable of storing huge amount of information. So flash memory, your USB drives and then magnetic tapes etc. So registers are inside the CPU, cache memory, some part of cache memory may be present inside the CPU chip, CPU chip or uh, in, in between RAM and uh, CPU. Uh, this RAM and ROM we will discuss, RAM, ROM and then hard disk we will discuss. But the point is, the cost increases. The cost increases as we go up. The cost increases as we go up. And also, speed increases as we go up. Speed increases as we go up. But size, if you take size, size increases as we go down. Registers are capable of storing only few bytes of data. Whereas DVDs, etc. are capable of storing a large amount of data in terms of gigabytes. So registers are inside the CPU, so they are very fast, but number of registers and the capacity of the registers is limited. Cache is present between CPU and RAM. We have different levels of cache, L1 cache, L2 cache, L3 cache, etc. And some cache, for example, L1 is inside the CPU and L2 and L3 are usually present inside the CPU chip inside the CPU chip, not inside the CPU, but inside the CPU chip and some are present outside the CPU in between CPU and RAM. Main memory otherwise called as primary memory, all the programs which are to be executed should be present, they should be present in main memory for the programs to be executed. You cannot store the programs within the say registers, registers are not capable of storing that uh, programs because they are limited in size. Uh, again, you cannot directly execute the programs that are present in the hard disk. So, programs if you want to execute, they to be brought into the RAM. They have to be brought into the RAM. Main memory can be broadly classified into two types RAM and ROM. Random access memory, read only memory. Random access memory, read only memory. But both are of a kind actually random access only. Random access in the sense that uh, memory you can say. Uh, 
it is a you can imagine it as a some something like a notebook you say different lines are there now random access means it takes same amount of time to access any line any line so any part of ram or rom can be accessed within approximately the same amount of time ram is volatile in the sense that if the power goes off then the ram contents are lost whereas rom read only memory it is it is non volatile it is non volatile its contents are not lost when the power goes off not lost when the power goes off both are random access whereas ram is read considered as read only memory ram can be further classified into static ram and dynamic ram ram can be further classified into static ram and dynamic ram static ram means it is made out of flip flops it is made out of flip flops the storage devices are called as flip flops we will study about these things in maybe computer organization you can say they are small storage devices capable of storing only one bit of information but they need to be refreshed they need to be refreshed periodically they need to be refreshed periodically okay whereas if you consider dynamic rams dynamic rams are made out of capacitors they are also need to be refreshed periodically they are also need to be refreshed periodically but static ram is static ram is fast when compared to the dynamic ram but it costs more but it costs more usually the ram means inside a computer it is a dynamic ram ddr double data rate 4 current uh, rams are comes under the category of ddr4 ram can be further classified like this read only memory programmable read only memory erasable programmable read only memory electrically erasable programmable read only memory but all these are read only memories only read only memories only remember as a programmer you cannot write the content uh, to the rom so you cannot write the content to the rom that's why they are called as read only you require special devices to write the content to the rom usually inside a computer you do you will not be having those special devices but you, so you cannot write the content to the ram if you have special devices you can write the content erasable programmable read only memory where the content is erased using what is called as ultraviolet light whereas electrically erasable means you can erase the content using el electricity and you can erase parts of it in the case of ultraviolet light the entire content is lost whereas here you can erase selectively that means partially depending on your requirement hard disk hard disk is considered as a permanent storage device it is a non volatile device it is a permanent storage device its contents are not lost when the power goes off all the data you load into the computer is actually stored on the hard disk whenever you have the programs you want to execute the programs the content that is present in the hard disk is transferred into the ram so ram you can imagine something it is something like a collection of platters platters one plays it one above the other uh, something like your cds you can imagine cds cds plays it one above the other cds plays it one above the other and there will be a spindle you can say rod like thing over which you will be placing this platters and this cds or platters can rotate cds or platters can rotate so associated with each side of the platter associated with each side of the platter there will be what is called as read write head there is what is called as read write head this read write head writes and reads the content from the platters and data is uh, in the form of ones and zeros this ones and zeros uh, are uh, written by what is called as magnetizing the surface north pole south pole etc by magnetizing you can create ones and zeros each platter again each platter uh, consists of what are called as tracks tracks you can uh, assume them as concentric circles concentric circles so as outer side there will, the size of this uh, circle will be more as you go, go on as you move towards the spindle or inner side the size of the track decreases but density remains but density varies 
and capacity remains the same capacity of track independent of the side is same but density increases that means the amount of data that can be stored in a unit of uh, size in a unit of size whatever may be centimeter or inch so unit of size varies density is more means more amount of data is present in small amount of memory so the platters that are placed one above the other they can be called as a cylinder cylinder i already told you there will be concentric circles called as tracks uh, on all the platters and these tracks are further divided into parts called as sectors sectors we just uh, you can draw simply draw the lines you can imagine like something like this this is the if this is the track then you can divide it parts parts they are called as tracks they are, they are called as sectors so data is actually written and read in terms of sectors generally motherboard 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 is a printed circuit board all of you might have seen this printed circuit board it, it, it is available in walkmans uh, even uh, your tvs have these printed circuit boards printed circuit boards green boards you might have seen even in the uh, toys you can see the pcbs printed circuit boards so all the components of a computer are actually directly or indirectly connected to the motherboard motherboard some are directly inserted in the motherboard some are connected using cables so cpu memory etc are directly inserted into the uh, motherboard some hard disk dvd etc are connected using what are what is called as bus or ribbon ribbon and out again you can connect external devices also using what are called as ports ports are those which you see outside your uh, which, which you see generally in, in the front side of the computer or back side of the computer usb ports will be there keyboard ports will be there so they are the ports ports are nothing but uh, you can say something like a sockets into which you can uh, plug in different devices different devices and at the back side of the computer you can see what is called as switched mode power supply power supply or smps or switched mode power supply which converts alternating current to dc current alternating current to direct current ac to dc okay so that that is one which converts ac to dc and supplies the power to different components of the computer different components of the computer so all these motherboard cpu etc are placed inside a what is called as case or chassis case or chassis you can fix the motherboard to the case and then you can place all the all the components of a computer so and uh, this comes under uh, in different forms in different forms you have uh, table top tower type of uh, uh, cases blade type of cases etc so usually for desktop computer you can see it is a tower type so whereas if the servers uh, if you are using more number of servers in data centers etc they will be in some terms of blade blade type blade type is nothing but you can say like a flat something like a flat box flat box so that is, that is regarding the internals of a computer what we have studied major components minor components and peripherals so we discussed about the major components in detail we have cpu memory and then motherboard motherboard they are the three major components apart from it you have this case also apart from it you have case also there are there can be other kinds of uh, devices also and uh, you have peripheral devices which are keyboard and mouse we have not discussed those things but they are the peripheral devices they are the peripheral devices inside the computer uh, there will be minor devices also minor devices also so you can uh, if you open a, com a computer you can see it so maybe you can try to open it if uh, you, if what all you want to know more, more about it uh, i will upload one video it's already available on my in my youtube channel otherwise you can search in the uh, youtube also so the motherboard uh, what are the components of the computer internal components of a computer you can see the each and every component Thank you. Thank you for joining.